family, we are back with another lit video for you all. And this video might be a little controversial. Stay tuned, we're gonna be discussing the functionality of the American Bully. What do we feel the American Bully is lacking? And most importantly, how do we make this breed better? How do we chase perfection? <laughs> Stay tuned, let's get into the video. out of the way this is not for the easily offended and I am not here to offend anybody whatsoever I apologize if I did come across that way this was in no intent meant to be that way this is just more so discussing the functionality of the American bully breed just as all of you are we are extremely passionate and love this breed and our goal here is how do we chase perfection how do we build the most complete overall American bully the has breed type functionality and temperament because a lot of people seem to forget about the temperament part of the breed and it's more important that how do we get to a point within the community where our dogs are so damn near perfect in structure and breed type that how you handle them will determine the winner in the show ring I don't believe that any dog period should be so far different in terms of structure we should be chasing perfection how do we get a well-balanced dog in the show ring and at home So when discussing the functionality of the American Bully breed, everybody seems to think that bullier traits means a loss of function within the American Bully, and that's completely incorrect. I do think that what we need to be doing, the bigger question becomes, how do we strive for perfection, right? If a dog with extreme features is bred to a dog that has great mobility, great structure, and we can clear up those flaws, and we can bring in that functionality to create that perfect movement. Our goal should be with each breeding to get better. How do we get each dog better? How do we create a more jacked up version of what we have, right? And that becomes the bigger issue because when we're discussing these dogs with extreme features, people think that they can't move and it's completely incorrect. I've physically seen extreme bullies that can move, have great drive, great temperament, and they were bred towards becoming the best overall balanced dog that they can be a more complete overall dog these dogs with all of those traits having great breed type looking like what the american bully should be and the bigger issue becomes how do we make this breed become more consistent with the look instead of chasing color instead of chasing features what ends up happening is we chase after extreme features and our foundational structure goes to shit. how do we make this better how do we improve on it and I think the bigger issue should be, how do we take the best dogs from best producing dogs and get them to combine together? To take a step up into the American Bully breed, right? If we strive for perfection, we breed for perfection. Instead of chasing color, we will get to where we need to be. But like I said, that's my opinion. <laughs> extreme bullies that can't move absolutely just like there is great structured dogs that look nothing like the American bully breed and I think that we have to get the perfect cross between both to create the most complete dog now 
in the ABKC, people say, well, the dogs are bullier traits win. And the, I think the bigger thing becomes, right, with the bullier traits is how do we have dogs with high rears and a poor foundation winning? Well, they have the muscle, right? Well, common sense should be, well, you know what? Let's get that. But breed it with something that's perfect. And let's mix it together to create perfection. And I think that's where we're lacking, right? And when you're looking at these extreme bullies, I think the bigger question is when you see them so puffed out, but their fronts look crazy bold, the rear assembly is awful, the stifles are stiff as hell, they're completely cow hawked. And sometimes, to be honest with you, they have a more of a bulldog head instead of a, the traditional American bully head. Why did that happen? Were we chasing after color or were we chasing after features instead of chasing after perfection to complete the best overall dog? And people seem to get this twisted. A dog that's severely bold, they're gonna move rough. When they're running, you're gonna see the movement. It looks awful. When the dog's rear assembly is shitty, they're gonna look awful while they're moving. How do we cure all of that? How do we make this better? So what adds to this problem furthermore? I think the chasing of color, mainly because People want to see color. And listen, to people that aren't familiar with the community, they just see a chocolate tri, for example, or a lilac tri, or a chocolate tri merle, or a lilac tri merle, and they go ballistic. They're like, oh, I want one of those. But they're not educated on what the American Bully Breed should be. Dogs that have color cost a lot more money. And when they cost a lot more money, people want return on investment, right? So dogs with color that shouldn't be bred are being bred, which is oversaturating the market to making it what it is today. How do we breed to get better? And most importantly, you have to understand what you have in your camp, right? You can't be kennel blind. You have to really thoroughly evaluate your dog to see what they're missing. So if I know I have a dog with a great headpiece, great fronts, a wide chest, but they have a shitty top line with a less than average rear assembly and straight stifles, I know that the girl he needs to be paired up to has to have the perfect rear assembly and the straighter top line so that I can get a better overall dog than what I have. And it should be paramount that that female that you're pairing up your dog with has similar traits to what your dog has in order for them to create a better version of themselves, right? You just can't breed a dog to any dog and just because they have great grandparents in the second, third, or fourth generation and think you can get that look. No, you thoroughly have to evaluate first the pedigree, how their offsprings produce, but you also have to look at the parents. What are the parents bringing to the table? Because the parents are gonna be the ones throwing their looks on the pups. If you combine two great dogs, there's a higher probability of a chance you're gonna get great puppies in a great litter, you know what I mean? And if they come from you know, parents that were able to produce, chances are your dog's gonna produce a lot more higher quality pups. And I think furthermore, that goes towards, have those parents been health tested? Were they embark tested? You have to understand we're breeding for health, right? We wanna be able to complete the overall American belief. And I think that gets misconstrued sometimes, right? We have some dogs that, you know, people are familiar with and they're like, oh, I want a dog because they got the name in the pet, but, the productions aren't the best, right? And I think we really have to open our eyes to that and say, well, you know what? How do we create better? There should be no reason, this is just my opinion, why in the XL category, we have five different looks. That's just what it is. Pocket class, you know what you're getting. Classic class, you know what you're getting. Standard class, you know what you're getting. But the XL class, we have like five different looks. And why is that? People throw out weight. Oh, I got the 200 pounder. I got the 225, I got the 175. 175, and the dog looks nothing like an American bully, but yet you're labeling it an American bully, which is also leading other people to think, oh, that's what American bully should be, right? How do we utilize the standard to create the best XL, right? Obviously, I understand that this breed is younger, so it's gonna be very difficult to compete with dogs with a lot of time and to have 200 years of development. And the goal should be when we go into a show ring or just a show in general, that there is no confusion with what the American Bully is. That the structure is amazing. The foundation is amazing. How do we create the perfect foundation to make it all come together to create the perfect American Bully? I believe extreme qualities are necessary but structure is necessary. You combine the two and you get the most perfectly balanced dog with great temperament, great drive, 
and you mix it all together to get the perfect American bully. And I think that's where we're lacking. I think that's where we need to go in our visions for the American bully. And But like I said, that's just me. Everyone else has their own opinion and they are 100% welcome. But I do feel like, although that is too extreme, like to the max where they're brawlic as hell, they may not be able to move. I think it's finding the happy medium, finding that balance where you could create it all, where an extreme dog has great structure and great mobility. You look at the dogs that are winning, and I think some people get it misconstrued. They say, well, ABKC is pushing this and UKC is pushing that. I don't think we should be pushing any of that. I think we should be pushing for the American bully overall and not worrying about what ABKC says or what UKC says. No, pushing the American bully to its totality to make it the best version of themselves, to create the best version of the American bully so that we could compete universal in every registry where everyone knows that's an American bully. <laughs> All right, everybody, so that wraps up the video. I hope that each and every single one of you enjoyed it. My goal here was just to inform people that are new and getting into the American Bully Breed, right? And just giving my opinion to the world in regards to American Bully Breed. And we can have conversations in the chat. And that's what this video is for, to create engagement and for everyone to voice their opinions. And to be honest, and we, we could talk at the end of the day, I love the American Bully Breed in its totality. I love the bully. I love it overall. I love the classes and I just love these dogs genuinely to my core. And for me, I'm just extremely passionate about it and I just would love to have a conversation with anybody in regards to it. So please don't forget to like the video, hit that thumbs up, it really helps us. Comment, helps with engagement, helps get us out there and sub to the channel to catch our journey and to stay tuned for all of the videos that we're gonna have coming out. So thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next one. Beauty baby.